Orton Towers by James Barkman and Tony Way. I'm so sorry for your loss, Master Orton. Your father was a great man. He'll be much missed. Thank you, Farmwell. As the new Earl, I hope I can live up to his memory, the exceptional standards he set in running this estate, and keep true to the memory of my ancestors in the great name of Fox Orton. <laughs> oh, oh, good one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Oh, don't give me an estate. I'll just sell bits of it and spend the money on yachts. <laughs> you can't even sail, Master Orton. I know I can't. Oh, I don't think I had someone to sail it for me while I stayed at home and watched MasterChef. Huh. Lloyd, I thought you said you were going to fire this tractor-faced simpleton. Yes. Sorry, Bridget, my darling. I'll do it straight away. Uh, Farmwell, you're fired. Oh, no. Not really. I heard that. Farmwell, you're fired. Right. <laughs> Sorry, my love. Uh, all these condolence flowers have got right up my nose. Oh, for God's sake, Lloyd, why can't you sneeze like a normal person? Yes, of course. Sorry, my sweet. A chew. Right. When is this solicitor going to read your father's will? I can't bear having to talk to all these staff as though they're real people. Sorry for your loss, man. Sod off. I'm sorry about the hold-up, my love, but ever since Father was accidentally buried alive at the beach as a child and then got buried alive in an avalanche while skiing in St. Moritz, he had this ridiculous, irrational fear of being buried alive. Oh, and then there was that time, of course, when we buried him alive. So he said we should check an hour after he was buried this time, just to make sure. He's dead. Just poked him with a stick. Nothing. Hooray! Ladies and gentlemen, now that we know the Earl is definitely dead, would those concerned please follow me to his study for the reading of the will? Excuse me, mate. Do you know where the bog is? I've got one starting to come out already. Um... I don't think the location of our loo is any of your business. Fair enough. I'll just squeeze it back up. That's got it. Come on, Nicky. We'll miss the will. He's got such a strong anus, my Trevor. It's a medical marvel. Ugh, what dreadful people. Why on earth are they coming to hear the will? Are they staff? I can't imagine the staff deserve anything. Oh, they're probably from the community or something, you know, hoping for money for a new dog racing hutch or an art centre and drug school for homeless dwarves or whatever. Uh, Well, I shall shun them. Could you please all take a seat? Are we all present? Chessington! Lloyd, old man! Bridget, you minx! I came back from Borneo as soon as I heard, old boy. How was the expedition? Fascinating! Fascinating place! Fascinating people! You can turn that tape off now. Sorry, yes, you know how I love to make an entrance. Lumumba! Why would you say these things about my mother? Oh, beg your pardon. Uh, turn it off, man. Okay. Of course, you've no doubt heard I was looking for the infamous Cobra Grande, which is French for Big Cobra. Very difficult to find, you know. You have to take a canoe upstream, which is paddled by an orangutan. That's a monkey man with complete disregard for the rules. (laughs) Fascinating. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Cobra Grande, big snake. But how big can a cobra be? Well, the Cobra Grande isn't just big. It's as thick as a car. Did you see one? Of course I've seen a car. There's one outside, a blue one. Oh, oh, the Cobra Grande. No, 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 not at all. Totally wasted trip, but fascinating. Anyway, as soon as I got word old Uncle Dickie had cocked it, I was on the first ship back to civilization. Oh, I'm hoping he's left me those decanters. Uh, let's get this will on the road. Read on, Macduff. My name's not Macduff. What is your name, then? Uh, Christopher Milligan. Read on, Christopher Milligan. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I shall now read the last will and testament of Earl Richard Fox Orton. To my cousin Eleanor's son, Chessington Ventures, I leave my three cut glass decanters. Yes, get in. I'll be in the kitchen filling them up and then emptying them. To my faithful manservant and lifelong companion, Munter, a man who has tirelessly served the Fox Orton family for over 70 years, man and boy, I leave the grand sum of one... Hundred pounds. What? In premium bonds. Bastard! I do hope you'll stay on, Munter. Well, I'm going to have to now, aren't I, you moon calf? Oh, good. The remainder of my money and the house and lands of Orton Towers I leave to my son, Lloyd. Oh, thank God. All of which he is to share with my other son, Trevor Pooh. What the? Other son? 
Yeah, it's Pod. Trevor Pod. Oh, I'm sorry. Your father's handwriting is appalling. Your father? His father? Don't look at me, mate. I knew it. I always said you had a brother, didn't I, Trevor? Because of how much you love the programme Big Brother. Yeah, because of how my favourite song is Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits. And because you love that TV show Band of Brothers. Yeah, and there was also that time my mum told me I had a long-lost half-brother. But I just thought she'd gone mental again, like when she thought they were radiator people. This is all clearly outright lies. There is no conceivable way in which my husband could be your brother. Now, hold on. (laughs) You're weird, Trevor. Why can't you sneeze like a normal person? Lloyd, do something. Call the police. I'm not sure this is strictly a police matter. Nonsense. I feel like I've been physically raped. I didn't touch her. Oh, no, you didn't, darling. Now, if you don't mind, perhaps someone could show my common-law husband to his loo. Don't bother. Just show me to a sink. Oh, wow. Oh, what a stench. Oh, oh, Bridget, my darling, I feel I may faint. Go on, then. Munter, may I lean on you? You can try, sir, but I will deliberately move away. Thanks awfully. You're ridiculous, Gin Fizz, my lady. Yes, thank you, Manta. It's delicious. I pissed in it. Splendid. Thank you so much, Manta. So, Mr. Pod, you're expecting me to believe that a man of the social standing of Earl Fox Orton was having an affair with your mother for over 30 years. Yeah, my mum told me he was a travelling snooker queue salesman. Should have realised, really. I mean, who needs to see a snooker queue salesman four times a month? We didn't even have a snooker table. Mm, I imagine there wasn't room for one in your council house. We do not live in a council house. Oh, really? Yeah, we live in a caravan. Of course. Under a bypass. Dear God. In Romford. Where? It's in Essex. I feel sick. You should come and visit it now. We're all family. You are not my family. You're not even legally married to him. Never has the phrase common law been so fitting. I feel a little bit wobbly. Well, you seem to be taking it remarkably well. How long was I out for? One hour and 17 minutes. You fainted precisely 32 seconds after your new half-brother defecated in his second-hand work trousers. It was fascinating. (laughs) I put a pencil in your nose and you had no idea. Can I take it out now? Yes, of course. It served no real medical purpose. Those pods seem a bit... What are we supposed to say instead of common these days? Oh, uh, real? Gritty? Urban? No, no, that's black people. Town centery? Better. They look like the sort of people who sit on the back of a bench with their feet on the bit where they should be sitting on it properly. Not that I've ever been to a town centre, of course. Well, we've all seen the bill. Yes. I suppose I should go and be friendly. Maybe offer them a drink and then they'll get drunk and leave and forget all about it. Yeah, you do that. I'm just going to stay here and play with my decanters. Now, which one shall I put the port in? Mm, All of them. (laughs) No, no, that's madness. What was I thinking? 